Hello all, it's been a while since I've done one of these personnel files, but let's look at the career of William T. Riker as depicted in the Star Trek shows. There will be apocryphal content added to fill in some blanks, but his canonical timeline overrides this, so although there's potentially room for him to have advanced to the rank of Rear Admiral before he retired, we see him return to duty in Star Trek Picard at the rank of Captain, so a large segment of his time on the USS Titan has yet to be documented. Nevertheless, there will be spoilers for all Star Trek series ahead, so let's jump in. William Thomas Riker was born on August 19th in Valdez, Alaska on Earth in 2335 to Kyle and Elizabeth Betty Riker. Kyle Riker was a civilian strategist to Starfleet and as we'll see, Will inherited his flair for tactical thinking. While growing up, Will Riker lived in Fairbanks for a time. In 2337 his mother died and Kyle Riker continued to work away from home frequently. This led Will to become very independent and take up cooking for himself as well as practice his love of jazz music. Occasionally his father would engage him in Anbo Jutsu training. In 2350 however, Kyle Riker simply stopped visiting his son and Will considered himself abandoned. In 2353, with nowhere else to go, he applied to join Starfleet Academy and was accepted. While at the Academy he took the command training program as his primary focus, but also engaged in numerous optional classes such as engineering, communications, sciences and piloting. He also won a spot on the Academy band. During one training simulation he managed to calculate a blind spot in enemy Tholian vessels and hid from its sensors for a time, figuring out the first of many tactical situations. In 2354 he took advanced survival skills, but an unexpected hurricane hit the testing site and he was trapped under a tree for three days before rescue. This year he also pulled a prank with friends on an instructor so that the senior officer transported in minus his clothing. This incident caused a much greater scandal than Riker believed and he took on a greater understanding of seriousness and of his duty. By the end of his time at SFA, Riker had enough of a grounding in sciences to pursue a doctorate but instead had his focus on securing a command position before the age of 35, preferably on a starship. He graduated in 2357 at 8th in his class and was promoted to Ensign. His first assignment was to the Tarrant 4 orbital base, but he refused in favour of a posting on the USS Pegasus NCC 53847. He took the position of Junior Con Officer under Captain Eric Pressman. However, the Captain experimented with a transphase cloaking device and the truth of the interphasic cloaking device was buried after a mutiny led Pressman, Riker and several others being chased off the vessel while the rest of the crew perished. Starfleet intelligence classified the incident, preventing further investigation. From 2358 to 2359, Will Riker was reassigned to the USS Fortuna when he was promoted to the rank of lieutenant. Eventually he applied to the first officer posting on the USS Hood and was accepted. However, the Excelsior class was mid-overhaul, and in the meantime he was appointed to the Federation Embassy on Beta Z. It was here he met Deanna Troy at a Beta Z dignitary's wedding and was smitten. He remained on Beta Z for several years and dated Deanna for some time, although there are some discrepancies based on differing timelines in books. He frequently took part in diplomatic missions around the area at this time until 2361 when he accepted a position as Operations Officer on the USS Potemkin in CC 18253. Here too he uncovered a method of hiding a ship in the magnetic pole of certain planets and powering down to hide from sensors. This year he took part in a rescue operation to Navala 4, a one in a million chance caused the transporter duplicate when he beamed out during the operation, which would remain undiscovered until 2369. He was promoted to Lieutenant Commander for his success. The next year, 2362, he took the position on the USS Zukov NCC 26136 as second officer and a year later he was assigned to the Excelsior class USS Yorktown NCC 2033 as the first officer. 
He soon transferred to the USS Hood, NCC-42296, under Captain Robert de Soto as the first officer, the same position he had deferred years earlier. However, he refused to allow Captain de Soto to beam into a hazardous situation, which was noted in his career as risking a court-martial. By the end of the year, however, he was promoted to commander and offered two positions, command of the USS Drake, or the XO position on the USS Enterprise NCC-1701D. In 2364, he accepted his role as number one to Captain Jean-Luc Picard. The USS Hood took him to Deneb 4, where he conducted a manual reattachment of the saucer section and proceeded to take part in the Farpoint mission. I'll gloss over the majority of the show's timeline, as you can easily watch all of that, but I'll highlight a few key points. He uncovered the Tacon remnants in the Delphi Ardu system and negotiated the release of the Enterprise and Ferengi vessels. In 2365, he took command of the USS Hathaway in an anti Borg training war game, which turned sour when Ferengi arrived. Riker then invented a method of faking the destroying of a ship, another manoeuvre credited to his tactical thinking. That year, he took part in an exchange officer programme with the Klingon Defence Force under Captain Cargan of the IKS Puch, which he took in stride. This year, he was also offered command of the USS Ares, which he refused, his second such decline. In 2366, he took command of the USS Enterprise D in the efforts against the Borg and Locutus. Admiral Hansen granted him a field promotion to captain, which overrode the previous offer to command the USS Melbourne. He failed to catch up to the Battle of Wolf 359, but managed to halt the Borg advance and recover Captain Picard. After he was cleared for duty, he stepped back down to commander and returned the captaincy to Jean Luc Picard. He was accused of the murder of Dr. Nell Apgar, but was discovered to be innocent. In 2367, Riker acted as a temporary host to the Odan symbiont to complete negotiations with the Pelians. In 2368, he was assigned to command the USS Excalibur as part of the Tachyon detection grid to halt Romulan involvement in the Klingon Civil War, and was given captaincy of the Enterprise again while Captain Picard left for Romulus to find Ambassador Spock. During 2369, however, he was relieved of his position as First Officer by Captain Jellico. He also undertook an undercover mission to Delonus IV. He was sent in 2370 to infiltrate the Marquis when Ensign Rolaren went rogue. This year, the Treaty of Orgeron violation that now Admiral Pressman had engaged in came to light. The former Pegasus crews, including Riker, were brought to a board of inquiry at Starbase 247, but he was cleared for duty. In 2371, the Battle of Viridian III took place, and Picard left Riker in command of the Enterprise as he beamed down to the planet's surface. Riker captained the ship's evacuation and controlled crash landing. In 2372, Riker was assigned as XO on the USS Enterprise NCC 1701E under Captain Morgan Bateson, who then passed over command to Captain Jean-Luc Picard. This year also saw the Battle of Sector 001 and the 2063 First Contact Incident. During the Dominion War, the Enterprise was assigned to the Gorn border, and in 2374, Riker was assigned to oversee encampments along the border with a Klingon Starfleet engineering team at El Caron II. The Enterprise was present at the Second Battle of Sol in 2375. Later that year, he took command of the Enterprise again to alert the Federation Council to Admiral Doherty and the sonar plan for the Baku. During this battle, he invented the Riker Maneuver. During this year, he was also assigned to acting captain of the USS Excalibur NCC-26517 until its own captain, Captain Mackenzie Calhoun, returned. In 2378, his father, Kyle Riker, died, and he proposed to Deanna Troy. Admiral Janeway also offered Riker command of the Lunar-class USS Titan, with a reminder that she suspected it would be the last time he was offered a command. In 2379, Captain Riker married Deanna Troy and accepted promotion to the USS Titan NCC-80102. Before he could depart, however, he took part in the Federation response to the Shinzong coup and then the Battle of Basin Rift. His first mission on the Titan was to attend diplomatic talks with Romulus at the head of a diplomatic task force which yielded promising results. 
Later that year, he began exploration of the Gum Nebula. During 2380, the Titan responded to a distress call from the USS Cerritos NCC 75567, driving off several pack led raider ships. In 2381, Thaddeus Troy Riker was born. In 2385, the synthetic attack on Mars led to the Federation banning synthetic AI development. Around 2387-ish, Kestra Troy Riker is born. Around 2391, he and his wife moved to Nepenthe with the family in an attempt to cure Thaddeus's illness, and William Riker was placed on reserve duty, in temporary retirement but with his commission still active. In 2396, Thaddeus Troy Riker dies. In 2399, Riker aided the retired Admiral Picard and then returned to Starfleet at Captain Rank on the bridge of the USS Zheng He NCC something to head up an Inquiry class task force that intercepted a Tal Shiar fleet over Capalius. The confrontation was resolved without firing a shot on Starfleet's side. This is the latest canonical event where we see Riker with more on the horizon. In terms of hobbies, Riker famously enjoyed jazz music and playing the trombone, but he would frequently try most sports and other new things. He took part in theatre, chess, cooking, fishing, darbo, and of course was a regular at poker. This willingness to try new things often opened him to innovative thinking that translated very well to his tactical ability, and he was a natural risk taker and diplomat. Lieutenant Commander Data estimated Riker only abides by traditional tactics 21% of the time, more often than not meshing ideas and standard responses to create unexpected outcomes. The Riker manoeuvre may be named after him, but ever since his time at the Academy, he had been creating unique solutions to problems. From analysing his career, we can see that he was ambitious and career focused, dedicating himself to his work, taking on more than he needed to, and was pegged as a potential to beat Kirk's record to captaincy. In fact, Riker himself had command of a starship in mind from the start, and turned down his first posting as an ensign to a space station in favour of the USS Pegasus. His first outing may not have gone as he expected, but it did little to dampen his rapid advancement throughout the ranks. He may have had more vessels than listed here, but he was eventually promoted to lieutenant. It was then that he took what seems to be his first land side posting on Beta Z, but only because he had already secured a position on the USS Hood and was simply waiting for the ship to finish its overhaul. But here is the first time we see his momentum falter somewhat, and it's probably not a coincidence that it's when he first met Deanna Troy, who would go on to become his Imzadi, his beloved and future wife. Like I mentioned, there's some open interpretation as to how long he spent on Beta Z, but his relationship with her did not work out. Roxana Troy did not approve of him, and he seemed too immature for Deanna. The two parted for a time, but would reunite on the Enterprise, both more experienced. In 2361, he returns to the career path, and advances through the ranks achieving Lieutenant Commander, gaining a second officer, then first officer position, all within three years, before then being offered his own command, or the posting he would become famous for on the Enterprise D. The Enterprise D would then confront Riker with the only thing that ended his blazing rise through the ranks, not Deanna herself, but comfort. His functioning as number one under Captain Picard, surrounded by colleagues he appreciated, was in many ways a perfect fit for him. He frequently got to flex his command muscles, and was apt at whipping the frequently rotating crew into a shape worthy of the Federation flagship, all the while learning from a mentor and friend in Picard. Starfleet would offer him his own command several times, but he always turned it down to the point where Admiral Janeway reputedly had to point out that the Titan would be the last offer, and he voiced several times that the Enterprise was the only ship he really had his eye on commanding. It was no secret that Riker pretty much hogged the much coveted XO position on the Enterprise, which garnered him some hostility on the parts of officers such as Elizabeth Shelby, who otherwise would have stepped into the role. It was usually interpreted as arrogance, but in actuality, 
it was comradeship and loyalty that kept him from advancing, and the pauses in his career reflect this. It's as if he had an ambition and desire in him to excel, maybe from the lack of parental figures, which wasn't placated by his career excellence, but it was sated by the relationships he found in his peers, which he showed dedication and loyalty to, and his own ambition took a back seat. In later life we see that he continues to hold this loyalty to his family and colleagues in high regard and reactivates his commission to save Picard. This view of William Riker is far from the only aspect to his personality, but it is one I interpreted from his career record. Some quintessential Riker episodes, in my opinion, include the first and second parts of Best of Both Worlds, where we can see his command capability on show, and Second Chances is a good reflection of his life choices. Lastly, I'd point out either the Icarus Factor or Episode 7 of Picard Nepenthe to see his approach to family as a son and a father. Thanks for watching this personnel file on Riker. It's a shame that the Titan books no longer fit entirely with the show's continuity anymore, but I still like to think that many of these events still happened in some way. Plus, we're still getting frequent dips into his life as a captain, so in many ways his character is still developing. Thanks again, I've been Rick, and I'll see you again for another video. Until then, goodbye.